Yum, yum! Hello, Pedro here. In this quick flow, I'm going to look into extrude multiple profile curves along multiple path curves. The resulting mesh, this tube, will have UVs that respect the proportion between the length of the profile and the length of the path. And the, the resulting UV is actually a composite of the UVs generated for both curves. The main operations, sweep and texture swap, have some tricky requirements. And so, for example, the sweep swap doesn't support the vertex UVs, so they do not transfer with this operation. This can be problematic because point UVs can't be discontinuous, meaning I could not have, for example, this point exist in the UV map here and here. We are used to have this happening when we use vertex UVs, but such is not possible with point UVs. So the workaround for this is whenever I have a seam, I do I open those edges. And so instead of having just a single edge loop in here, what I'm actually looking into is two edges. So if I would pull this primitive apart, I would see that the mesh is open in here. So this will allow me to have uh, point UVs that have discontinuous points or discontinuous positions in the UV map. The other issue is that SweepSoft prioritizes the UV information that comes from the path. So if I set up some UV here on the profile to then build up the composite, that information will be lost. So the workaround will be to create an attribute where I store the UV X channel of the profile UV. Another thing is that sweep swap should only be uh, taken, taking in polygon curve. This is because if I uh, input a profile that is a NURBS curve, the resulting tube won't be a polygon surface, but a NURBS surface. And if the path is NURBS, well, it works, but there are some buggy behaviors, for example, when transferring integer attributes. So it is best, that is my recommendation, is to only use polygon curves for the sweep swap. Now for the texture swap, we're also going to use the arc length spline type to unwrap the curves. This this, this is a very handy type in which that it uh, the, the curve is basically unfolded and straightened and it respects the relative distances between the points in the UV. The only issue is that it doesn't work for polygon curves and this is a, requ a requirement for the sweep swap. So this will force me to go from polygon curve to NURBS curve and back into polygon curve. So it's a bit uh, cumbersome but in the end it will work. I'm also going to look into how to convert a group of edges into polygon curves and how to use the primitive intrinsic measured perimeter which is basically the length of each curve. Let's look into this in Houdini. So the basic setup that I have in here is this sweep swap where I have a circle with six sides set to polygon as the profile and this polygon curve that is fit into a NURBS curve and then resampled so that I have more points, more samples for the sweep to place hexagons. Now, if I come in here and I just go to the output and skin output, skin unclosed, I get the extrusion that I was talking about. I have other cases in here where instead of just a single profile, I have multiple profiles, say with this font, which says flow and so if I plug this in here notice now that uh, this is not working very well and for this to be fixed I need to come here to the sweep and change the cycle type to one primitive at a time and now the word flow is working correctly I have here another example where instead of this smooth curve I have a curve with beveled corners so I can just come in here and change this state to two and you see those corners growing up or instead of just a single primitive I can also have this L system which has 27 primitives and so I'm going to have the same profile being extruded along multiple paths. So let's go back to the basic case and in this case I'm going to build up the UVs and then we can check the other ones again. So I'm going to do the UVs for my path and I'm going to put a UV texture in here and the first thing to do is to change the attribute class to point and then I'm going to choose the arc length spline. Let me put this this one in here to show what's going on. In this case, I'm going to put the UV view in here. And so if I try to select some points, notice that everything is at the origin. So nothing is happening because this option in here needs a NURBS curve. So I'm going to use a convert and I'm going to convert from polygon to NURBS curve. Now I'm also going to put the U order set to two. This is so that the curve is not smooth, but it stays linear as the polygon curve. Now, if I check again the UV texture, you'll notice that I'll have the points distributed on the U coordinate the same way that they are in the 3D view. So they are, they are now like sort of, uh, the curve is sort of flattened, but it keeps the relative distances. Okay, so I want to plug this back into the sweep, but I have a NURBS curve and I need a polygon curve. I'm gonna put a poly path swap, and now I can plug this in here. Now let me check the profile. I got this hexagon, but instead of this filled polygon, I want a polygon curve that goes around this polygon edge. So I'm gonna put here a polypath again, 
and not this one. I can just copy this one in here. And right away, I get a polygon curve that is the, the, the edges of the hexagon. Now, I need this, this profile to be open and not closed. At the moment, it's a closed curve. And if you come, if I come in here, you see that I have this point highlighted, meaning that the profile is open in there. And so as the profile is extruded along the path, this open edge will be generated. And this is what I need. So to open the uh, one point, I'm going to put here Fuse. And now instead of having this, I'm going to have unique. And instead of having six points and seven vertices, I have seven points as well as seven vertices. So if I come here and I turn on the IDs, let me select point six and I move it. You see that now the profile is open. So this is what I need. Okay, I'm going to put this in here and create the UV. For that, I can just duplicate this network. And now I'll have the UVs generated as well, as you can see in here. So I can plug this onto the sweep. And if I come in here, I have UV values on the points, but these UV values are just relative to the path. So I'll have to store the profile UV values on to, onto another attribute. So let me put here a wrinkle and I just need to store the X channel. And so this, this is the only one that has values. And so I'm going to put here that F at Y is going to be equal to V at UV dot X. And now I have this attribute called Y with the same values as this channel. So when I plug this in here, I can see that the sweep operation does, does transfer that value. Okay, so now I just need to copy these into the Y channel of the UVs. And so to that, I can use another attribute wrangle, just put this one in here, duplicate it. And so now I just need to write V at UV dot Y is going to be equal to of F Y. And right away, you can see the UV values filling the UV space. So if I put here a quick shade, you can see the texture check applied on the mesh. And you notice that the letters are stretched and that's because there's no notion of proportion of the 3D mesh onto the UVs, just filling the UV space. So I'm going to create a relationship between the length of the path with the length of the profile so that I have a factor by which I can scale my UVs and make them match this 3D proportion. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, an attribute that is intrinsic to the polygon curve. And if I come in here, come to the channel spread sheet primitives tab, and I come here to measured perimeter, you can see that I have the value of six. Same for my path. My path does have a measured perimeter, in this case it's 36. And this is just basically the length of these curves. So I'm gonna do, as I mentioned in here, there's a relationship between the profile and the path. And so in this case, I know the path will be longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide, I'm going to multiply my, uh, my Y value, or in this case for the UV, so UV, UV, sorry, UV, Y. It's going to be multiplied by the profile length but it's going to be divided by the rail or the path length. And so to get these, I'm going to use the measured perimeter. So let's, uh, let's do that. So first I'm going to multiply by the profile before the sweep. And so here I'm going to put this and prim intrinsic to get that measured, uh, measured perimeter attribute. So I want the input zero. I want the attribute that is called measured perimeter. And I want the primitive at the moment to be zero. So this is just one primitive. So okay. So this um, gets gets this done. Now I'm come I come in here, and you can see that UV is shooting up quite a lot at the moment. But when I now come here and I divide, so basically I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of multiplying, I'm going to divide. And so I'm going to copy this here, put this here. And so instead of input zero, I want to use the input one because I'm going to use the path instead of the profile. So put input one and I'm going to leave this at zero as well. So now you can see after this, let me put this. Why is this not onto UV? Oh, okay, so you can see that now the UVs are proportional with uh, the uh, with the with the 3D mesh. So as I change here, for example, the curve, you can see that the UVs stretch to match what is what you see here on the 3D viewport. Great. So let's see how this uh, does this work with uh, multiple profiles. In this case, for uh, for the font, let's put the, the font in here and. One thing that I'll need to change for this to work properly with the font is I'll have to, instead of putting here in this attribute triangle to get the length of just the first profile, I'll have to put prim num. 
And so this will check the length of the curve, not for the primitive zero, but for whatever primitive this, the point is on. And now you see that some things were fixed when, when I did that. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to redo. Some things were changed because it, it was using the length of the first primitive. And in this case, it's using the length of the primitive where uh, when it's on. Now, so this, this works for multiple uh, profiles. Let's check for multiple paths. So I'm going to put here the L system. And for this one, I'm also going to have to make some changes because you can see that uh, the proportional UVs are sort of lost in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here a wrangle and I'm going to store the primitive number. And so I'm going to put here I path ID equals to prim num. So with this on, basically now I have access after the sweep, I have access to the primitive to which the, the point belongs to. So then I can access in here instead of just accessing the first path, because this is what this is reading from the paths. So the, in this case, I have 27 paths, not just one. And in here, I'm just accessing the first path. So instead of using zero, I'm going to put now instead path ID. And now I get the appropriate proportion on all of the extrusions. Of course, now they have a different scale, but at least the letters you can see have a, a fit correct proportion. To, to basically bring down to everything to the same scale, I just need to put here uh, UV layout. And so by doing that, everything will be sorted into the UV space. And if I check correct island area proportions, I will get everything on the same scale. To see this better, I'm just gonna put here a transform UV transform. And if I scale this, let's say by 10, I think it should be enough to see here the viewport, how the proportion is the same for all the extrusions. Great. So now the last thing that I think I need to do is to basically fuse all the points because, well, I still have, let me disable this one. I still have the, um, the mesh open, the, the open edges, even though that for, uh, it, it might be desired or not, but the UV layout SOP automatically converts UVs that were point to vertex. This might not be desired, but in this case, I don't care. It allows me to just put here a fuse SOP after this, and this will close all the edges that I had open. So I probably can find an open edge if I come in here and let's say this L, if I select here a polygon, let's say this one, move it to the side, you can see that this edge is open. But if I fuse it afterwards, then it becomes closed. So this concludes this portion where I basically extrude things along path and I have the proper UVs with a proper proportion generated on them. I will leave um, a challenge for you because at the moment, the only thing that I have are the, um, the extrusions. I'm missing one thing in this, which is the caps. These tubes are open and a lot of times we, we want them closed. So my challenge to you is to do the caps for this setup. I've already done it and it's in here, as you can see. So it's in this case, it's not showing up the UV texture, but uh, it, the, the caps are also textured, as you can see in here. So I probably need to put, put here a UV shade and then you can see the UVs which are on the uh, on the caps as well. So this is my challenge and next week I will show how I did this, but for now I'm going to leave you with this. Cheers. Yum yum.